Hey, I'm Michael Hoff with Digital Theologian, and welcome to day four of 40 Days with Jesus. Today, we're talking about the temple cleansing in John chapter two. As we look at the temple cleansing in John 2, we find out that this is near Passover. Jesus is going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. In John's Gospel, there are three distinct Passovers. One here, one a little bit later around chapter 5, and another in chapter 11. And so we have three unique occurrences of Jesus going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And so this is that first occurrence. Now, that's a little bit odd, because in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this is one of the last things that happens in Jesus' life. It's the cleansing of the temple, the driving out of the money changers, and the turning over the tables that really leads the Jewish elite to conspire together to kill Jesus. This is the last straw. Jesus has become too revolutionary, and he must be killed. But in the Gospel of John, this is one of the very first things that John wants us to know. Now he's writing roughly 60 years after the life of Jesus and he's had some time to think and to reflect on the meaning of Jesus' life. Rather than doing a blow-by-blow -blow historical account like we might expect, like on somebody's Twitter feed on a timeline, no, this John is not doing that. John is taking a little bit more of the Hollywood look and he is thinking about the life of Jesus and he's giving us these key moments uh, in snippets and snapshots, in the order that is important for us as the reader to understand who Jesus is. John isn't as interested in chronology as he is in us understanding the reality of who Jesus is. We can't wait until the final week of Jesus' life to understand that he cleansed the temple and that he is the temple himself. John doesn't want to wait until the end of the gospel for us to know that Jesus has said these things. He said, up front, you need to understand Jesus is Son of God, Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, that he comes to Jerusalem on Passover and he makes a claim about his death and resurrection. John needs us to know that for our understanding of who Jesus is throughout the rest of the gospel. So as Jesus goes into the temple and he is, he is throwing out the money changers, he is cleansing the temple. He is turning tables upside down. And the thing that is unique in John's gospel that has always astounded me and messes with my, my picture of Jesus, right? The gentle Jesus who picks up the baby, kisses him, holds him, right? Puts the lamb on his shoulders, right? You've seen that painting in your churches, right? I mean, there's we're familiar with the painting of Jesus holding the lamb, gentle Jesus. Maybe, uh, you know, for those of you that are a little bit younger, you're, you're familiar with a different version of Jesus, uh, right? But these those pictures of Jesus don't fit well with the Jesus of John 2, where he comes into the temple, sees what's going on, seeing, sees that a place that should be a house of prayer, sees a place that, that should be welcome to the Gentiles, being turned into a place of commerce. And in that moment, Jesus sits down, and braids a whip. He braids a whip. There's that's right there in the text. And this is this is something that messes with my understanding. I, I think of Jesus as full of grace and, and loving and kind. And he is. Like those things are all true. But there are some things that are so important to the heart of God that he will sit down and braid a whip. We need to modify our understanding of the heart of God and who God is in light of this portrait of Jesus and evaluate, man, that he can, he's concerned for the poor because they were being taken advantage of by these money changers. He's concerned for the right nature of worship. He's concerned for the Gentiles having a space to worship him in, right? All of these things get tied up in John chapter two and in the temple. And Jesus goes through and clears it out so that right worship and prayer can be restored, right? So as we come to verse 18, we see that Jesus is questioned by the Jews. He does these, these actions, right? He comes in, breaks the whip, drives everybody out, dumps out the money, overturns the tables, and, and warns them, hey, this is God's house. It's a house of prayer. And now, after that, the Jews are asking, hey, man, what authority do you have? Like, what signs are you doing that we can trust you? Like, what, what is the authority that you have to come in and do this, right? That's the, that's the heart of their question. Throughout the Gospel of John, you'll see that Jesus is interacting with the Jews on a number of occasions. Now, let's not lose sight of the fact that Jesus is Jewish, that uh, his disciples are Jewish, 
that the festivals and the institutions that we're seeing Jesus interact with are Jewish. Jesus is celebrating Passover as a Jew. We see Jesus in John's Gospel even celebrating Hanukkah. Jesus is Jewish. These are the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes that are constantly at odds with Jesus in the Synoptic Gospels are the Jews in John. The Jews are demanding a sign they, of why Jesus could do what he has done. And it is so funny because they said, look, you haven't done any signs. We demand a sign. We want to see a sign. And Jesus then points to, right, if this temple is destroyed, in three days I will raise it up. And he was talking about his body. This is a first portrait of resurrection. The disciples are kind of brought into the picture to tell us that this is Jesus talking about resurrection. And when he rose from the dead, after three days, they finally got it. They missed it in the moment like they so often did and like so we so often do. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Let's put ourselves in their shoes. If we were there, we would have trouble understanding Jesus at various times as well. And so now they're looking back, they're reflecting. They go, oh my goodness, this is what he was talking about. After this, we find that the people in Jerusalem are believing on Jesus because of the many signs that he's done. I love this. The leadership is demanding a sign. Where do you come from? What authority do you have? The common people recognize that this is Jesus. He is who he's claimed to be. Oh, by the way, in the middle of that temple discourse, he's claimed God is his father. That is what makes the Jews want to kill him in chapter 5. But later they realize Jesus is claiming to be the Son of God, putting him on a level with God. And so they want to kill him from that point on. He's already done that here in John 2. But they don't catch it until John 5. I love seeing Jesus come in and cleanse the temple, make it possible for people to worship him, to worship God in the right way. And then, even though the elites miss it, the common people seeking after the heart of God understand it. So as you think about Jesus and the temple cleansing, modify your view of Jesus and let, and let the richer, fuller picture of who Jesus is shape your understanding of the gospel. Thank you guys so much for watching the videos. And if you enjoy it, like it. If you have a comment or a question, please leave it below. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow on day five.